Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nick with Indie Eagle, and if I sound a little weird, uh, I'm sorry again. I've gotten sick over the weekend, but I think I'm getting a little bit better now. But uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering some more things about uh, backgrounds. The main thing that I'm going to be teaching in this one is how to make parallax backgrounds. Uh, you may have seen them in older games like Mario or something like that. But uh, I've already got some things done. I've got a apple that we're going to be controlling, and I've gotten I've got two backgrounds here, and this one comes with Game Maker, uh, Game Maker Eight, and this one I got in a resource pack off of the Yo-Yo Games website. If you want to download the resource packs, I'll have a link in the description. Go check them out. They've got a ton of really good stuff in there especially for uh, RPG games as far as I can tell but um, let's go ahead and create a room and we're gonna set up the backgrounds let's go to the backgrounds tab here and in background zero we're gonna put this one now you'll see that it's tiled like this uh, you can turn off the tiling tiling horizontally or vertically but we're just gonna leave that alone and we're just gonna uh, click stretch right here Okay, now let's go and click background one. And we will put the other one. And we're going to stretch it too. And I know the uh, graphic style, it doesn't line up at all, but it's just a tutorial, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and let's go to settings and change this to 1000 by 1000. And I know the backgrounds look horrible now because they're all stretched, but. Once again, I'm just trying to show you something here, so. And let's place that in there and go to views. For parallax backgrounds to work, you have to set up a view. So we'll just enable the use of views, visible when room starts, and set H border and V border to 275 by 275, and follow object zero. Okay. And now we'll go into the object. And the only thing I've got here is the movement code, and that's it. Let's go into the step event. And this is where we're going to make the parallax backgrounds. Okay, so let's separate these real quick. Both of these are doing something entirely different. Uh, basically, well, not really entirely different. Uh, the reason I have a zero in these little uh, brackets here, it's telling which background this code is referring to, and how you can tell which background it is, is right here. I have only two backgrounds, one's background zero and one's background one. So when we put a zero or one or whatever number, that's the background you're referring to. Okay, so what this is doing, it's making the X position equal the view X view position divided by two. You can increase or decrease this number depending on how slow or fast you want the background to move. In this case, this is the very back background, and I want it to move slowly, so I've set it to 2. This one is background 1, uh, the mountains. I want it to move fast, so I've set it to 4. Okay, and we can just uh, copy and paste this here. And we're going to set these X parts to Y, like that. And this is all of the code you need for the parallax backgrounds just background underscore x which background you're referring to equals view x view which view you're referring to divided by two and if you're wondering which view I'm re uh, you're referring to then you can also set up multiple views and it works the exact same way as backgrounds okay so let's go ahead and test this out now
and as you can see when I move it looks like the world has more depth more dimension to it this is a really nice effect to add into uh, platformers it looks really good when you have uh, especially two backgrounds like this and uh, that's pretty much all to this tutorial though and like I said if you want this background then go and get the resource packs there's a lot of backgrounds and sprites tiles you know pretty much anything you need to create games and I'll have a link to that in my description but that's pretty much it for this tutorial and I hope you've learned something see you next time